In most shoot 'em ups and bullet hells, your character will immediately lose HP or lose a life as soon as you get hit by a projectile or an enemy. However, some bullet hells, like for example Toho Project, allow you to recover from a hit that you have already taken by bombing within a very small time frame after the hit. This feature tends to be referred to as death bombing and gets used a lot by both scoring and survival players. However, newer Toho players often have trouble when they try to pull off death bombs. Which is quite understandable, as it is a pretty unnatural mechanic and almost feels like a glitch when you pull it off for the first few times. Newer players and even some experienced players tend to misunderstand the point of death bombs and sometimes even think that it's a flaw and makes the games worse. In this video I want to explain how death bombing works and clear up some of the confusions that exist around death bombing. So, how does death bombing work? Well, as I said before, if you bomb right as you got hit, you will not lose a life, but instead bomb your way out. In most games, the time frame to perform a death bomb in is 8 frames. In EOSD, the time frame gets smaller with every successful death bomb on a single life. And the death bomb window starts off with 6 instead of 8 frames. And a Perishable Knight gave you the ability to pull off a last spell, which extended the death bomb window to up to 0.9 seconds depending on the amount of bombs you have and what team you are using. But unlike normal death bombs, these last spells cost 2 bombs instead of 1. Imperishable Knight still has a normal death bomb window, but it is only 1 frame. So don't expect to get that one very often. Mountain of Faith deducts point item value whenever you bomb, but you can bypass this penalty by performing a death bomb instead. And as last we have 10 desires, which also allows you to death bomb with a trance as long as your gauge is full. This technique gets referred to as death trancing. So now that I explained most of the important stuff regarding death bombing, I want to get a myth out of the way. I like to refer to this myth as the reflexive death bombing myth. Every once in a while I see people saying that death bombs are overpowered or even unfair because some people can supposedly pull them off with nothing but sheer reaction time. I will show that this idea of death bombing on pure reaction is wrong, through a very simple example. As you can see, there's a red square on the screen. I am going to remove this square, and when it reappears, I want you to pause the screen as quickly as possible. I will also let you hear the Toho Death sound as an extra auditory indicator of when you need to pause the screen. If you managed to have the red square on your screen while the video was paused, then congratulations, you know how to use the speed settings on YouTube. But I think I can safely assume that most of you did not catch the red square on a paused screen. But don't worry, I'm not gonna take away your driver's license or anything. The red square only showed up for 8 frames, or, assuming YouTube is gonna allow me to put this at 60fps, 0.13 seconds, which is too short for human reaction time to do anything with. The human brain cannot process an auditory or visual trigger and send a reactionary impulse within 0.1 seconds of time. This is why even at the Olympics, if you respond to the start signal within 0.1 seconds, it will count as a false start. And even though the death bomb window in most Toho games is 0.03 seconds larger than this reaction threshold, it is still basically impossible for humans to reflexively respond to it. Especially if they're also trying to do their best at something as intensive as a bullet hell shoot em up. So some of you are probably wondering now how all these experienced players pull off death bombs like they're nothing. Well, it all has to do with reading bullets, anticipation and general knowledge of the game when it comes to invincibility frames and hitboxes. To me, death bombs are basically you tried badges with a built-in tranquilizer gun. It is a way of the game to at least reward you for your ability to anticipate and read bullets, even though you could not find a way to maneuver around them. They keep the game from being frustrating and at least make you feel like you're not more incapable than an ice fairy during summer. If you are able to see the bullets that are only a few frames away from hitting you, and you think you cannot move out of the way anymore, you can at least still respond within the death bomb reaction time, and instead of losing a life, you just lose a single bomb. People who death bomb all the time know the hitboxes of the game really well and are great at reading the bullets that are thrown at them. They do not have superhuman reaction time or use tools for their death bombs. They just followed the age-old advice of get good. There is no need to force yourself to learn how to death bomb. It comes with experience of the game and is pretty minor on its own. But if you really want to practice death bombing, just try and run straight face into a few bullets and bomb when you think you get hit. 
If you hear the death sound, you pulled off a death bomb. If not, then you're an idiot who for some reason is running straight into bullets. And with that, I would like to end this video and wish you all good luck on your expressing endeavors.